Xin Chow, what's up, everybody? All right. Oh, I hit a button. We'll, we'll figure it out when we turn the camera around. But in this video, we're going to talk about there's been a lot of accidents lately, a lot of car accidents. It's not been good. People have been dying. We're going to talk about the limo services that like take you from here to Boom Tao and like other areas. Like, do I use them? Would I continue to use them? How sketchy it can be really get. So we're going to get into it. Hold on. There we go. So as usual, it would be great, greatly helpful to the channel if you subscribe. If you don't want to, no worries. If you want to smash the like button, that's cool. Leave a comment and all that jazz. If not, we'll keep it moving. A lot of content is getting made for Patreon only now and only uploaded to Patreon. You can join for as little as $5 a month, which is 16 cents a day. Or you can join for $11 a month, which is like 35 cents a day. So pretty good value for what's on there. So recently, what just happened? I hate how they do that. Yo, yo, yo. They think everybody's a tourist again, which I guess, you know, I would too if I was them, but it was pretty nice during COVID and like after COVID that you weren't treated like a tourist if you were here, but now you really, really are. So recently, like just yesterday or the day before, one of the limousines crashed with like uh, 20 people in, and it, it hit a tractor like head on. And it killed eight people pretty much instantaneously. And other people are in the hospital getting uh, seen after. It's the biggest thing in the news right now. Like, it's a, uh, you know, it's an unfortunate, tragic event that happens far too often in Vietnam because of the way the driving is. Like, I don't even like to take the limo. Like, we call them limos, but they're like little buses where that seat like up to 20 people, sometimes 15 people and they take you from one area to another. But the way it's set up is like, how many can you get in a day? So like, how many of these things, walk away from the music, how many trips can the driver get in per day is how much more money he'll make. So I've had some of my craziest driving experiences in these limousines going to Boom Tao to go hang out with Mark. And I tell you what, it, I've had some trips where like, me and Vietnamese are yelling at the driver the whole time to just be like, dude, slow the F down, man. We're not in a hurry. Like, they're splitting lanes. Like, if you're not from LA or a big city from America, you don't know what splitting lanes means. It's usually a motorcycle term where you can split in between two lanes in the middle, which is like pretty sketchy even on a motorcycle. But they're splitting lanes on the highway going, a hundred miles per hour in a limousine like legitly in a limousine like a bus so they're driving as fast as they can they all think they're they're uh dom from fast and the furious they all think they get, they're perfect drivers so what happens when you drive this fast so then you take it off the highway and you get on these like roads where there's like twists and turns and you're driving this fast you have no time to react whatsoever so like if something bad happens like you have zero reaction time on the situation you have zero reaction time to to figure out if something goes wrong and that's exactly how all these accidents happen is the guy's going too fast and he has zero time to make an adjustment if he needs to do one like he's completely effed like I think this guy just came up on a corner and there's just a tractor trailer there, like in the middle of the road. Well, what are you gonna do when you're going 100 kilometers an hour or faster? You've got no time to do anything. So I mean, it's, it's, it's something you gotta think about. Now these bigger buses, these bigger sleeper buses, they don't get in as much accidents as say the limousines do. This guy drives retarded. Yes, retarded. This is not a PC channel. We are not censoring. We've got the back shot. Getting the perfect angle. See? Thumbnail. Ha ha ha. So, 
it's a risky endeavor. You have to understand that if you're going to take one of these limos somewhere, and it's one of the small vans, you better be prepared to speak up and tell the guy to slow down a lot. Like, the crazy one we took the Vung Tao the last time, it took me complaining and, like, three other Vietnamese to be, like, start yelling at the guy in Vietnamese to get him to slow down. And he still didn't really slow down. He didn't care. Like, in Vung Tao, one of those drivers hit and killed uh, someone in the streets in Vung Tao, driving crazy like that, and then fled the scene. It's a pretty common thing here to flee the scene if you kill someone, if you're driving a car or a vehicle, which is wild. Like, and then the law is so weird here, like, these guys won't serve much jail time for manslaughter, but if you are transporting two kgs of crystal meth, you'll get your head chopped off. Like, it's, <laughs> it's wild. Like, what, what needs to happen if there's any way to fix it is, like, actually have these guys face some serious jail time when they make mistakes like this. Like, and there, there needs to be more policing, you know? I'm all for understanding how Saigon traffic moves and, like, the big city traffic. Like, taking the sidewalks. It, it may seem weird at first, but, like, no one's really getting hurt off that shit. That stuff's fine. Like, it could be a nuisance if you're walking around, but, like... You're in a different country, adapt. No point in crying about it. And no one's getting killed. Like, I've never read an article of where someone pedestrian got killed on a sidewalk for walking when a motorcycle was coming through. You just don't read those. The ones you read are is when you've got like a commercial driver and one of those limos driving like a psychopath and smashing into something because he didn't have enough time to adjust and killing a bunch of people. This guy killed himself on top of it. I mean, that's where the regulation needs to come in. They, they need to start putting the police on these highways and start giving these dudes heavy penalties, taking away their license and, like, no opportunity for, for like, coffee money. Like, there should be no... If the dude's going that fast, driving 120 kilometers on a, a freeway here, nah, man, take his license. Give him a huge fee. Take away his livelihood. Make him learn a lesson. Like, if you don't learn a lesson from something and you make it easy to do it again, guess what? You're gonna keep doing it again. It's like anything in life. If you don't have kind of like structure and stuff, you know, you're gonna keep making that same choice. That's why so many things are repeated here because no one really gets in trouble for anything, especially if you have coffee money. You can just get out of it. Like, it, it made me, seeing this big accident with the limousine, it, it's going to make me take the ferry every time to Boomtown now. I'm not going to take the limo anymore. I, I, I don't want to play that game. I don't want to put my life in the hands of some guy that wants to make more trips per day to make a few hundred K more dong in his pocket and put the lives of everybody in that thing at risk. And the reason I made this video is because I've experienced these things firsthand. Like, that was a harrowing experience when I was with the last Vung Tao limo guy. And if any of you, calm, calm. And if any of you have been to uh, Chao Oi, he smacked my butt with gum. The vendors are really, it's, it's increasing every day with the street kid vendors. You never want to see that. was like a three year old child trying to sell me gum. And you never want to pay for any of that stuff. Like we talked about the car thing, let me talk about the vendors. Like, I meet a lot of dudes that are just here and they're giving all the kids all the money and stuff all everywhere. You do not want to give these kids any money. Do not give any of the kid vendors any money. They're working child labor. They're not getting any of that money. And the reason why they keep going out and doing it is because the parents are getting the money and they're making money from tourists giving them money. So the only way to stop that problem is to not give them money if everybody doesn't give them money then they'll have no reason to bring these kids out and try that gra that, that that grift you know it's definitely a pet peeve of mine now i try to tell everybody when i'm on boy vane not to give the kids money the only person you should give money to on boy vane is the midget girl or politically correct dwarf uh, small person i don't know everything changes every year really no way to say anything correct now without looking it up but uh 
Yeah, giving kids money here, not a good idea. The only place I've seen that's actually been tackling that topic of giving kids money and telling people not to is Sapa. So Sapa actually drives around police trucks with a loudspeaker that says, do not give the Hmong kids money. They're not going to school. Each dollar you give them makes it more encouraging for their parents to bring them out every day and beg for money. So, or sell their trinket for whatever. And a lot of times nobody even takes the trinket. They just give them 10 or 20K and that makes it even worse. Then there's nothing done to get that money. And then the parents see that they can be profitable from taking their three or four year old out and trying to sell some kind of junk, you know? So it's like, these are things that people shouldn't do here. But you don't know, like, I was guilty of it at first too. Like, I would give the kids money, especially the, so on Boy Van we call them Alibabas. So the little kids that sell the trinkets and take money. Alibabas, they used to be thieves as well. That hasn't really come back full force since COVID. But they used to steal your shit too. They would steal your phone or your bag. They'd bring multiple kids. Then maybe the mom or not even the mom, some lady that's hired by the mom to act like their mom. It's the same with like the people pushing around the Agent Orange babies, uh, the deformed children and asking for money. You really don't want to do that. It's just feeding into a beast that keeps it going. They're actively trying to shut that stuff down. Slow your shit down, bro. I don't know why Vietnamese yield to cars like that. It's a terrible habit on the driving front. So, uh, I mean, that's kind of the video. Just go at your own course. If you're willing to take that limo, my buddy takes it all the time. I don't know if I'm too keen to take it anymore, especially now that the ferry exists. Like, it's just a constant, like, putting your hands in someone else, your life in someone else's hands that absolutely don't care about any feedback you give them to slow down. So, it is what it is. I thought I'd bring that video to attention. Again, I'm working full time at another project and still working full time at YouTube and still working out and balancing a wife and a relationship. So, I'm the busiest I've ever been. I'm trying my best to still bring you guys like killer content of stuff a lot of people don't talk about here. So, bear with me. We'll find our uh, footing again and we'll keep her moving. So, thank you guys as ever. Stay frosty. We'll see you on the next one. Peace out.